I used to write about the colonial history on an almost daily basis as a journalist. And Britain at that point was generally viewed, so we're talking over a decade ago, generally viewed as being a kind of second in uh, pole in Europe to the Germans, to the German industry. Now, we don't even get in the first division. It's quite astonishing. The decline of the British car manufacturing has been dramatic. Hello, I'm Brendan Donnelly. I'm the director of the Federal Trust, and I'll be talking today with a member of the Council of the Federal Trust, David Gao. David is a former Guardian correspondent in Berlin and Brussels, and at the moment he edits the blog Skeptical Scott, which I think is not Eurosceptical Scott, but a very different kind of tradition of scepticism. Uh, we're going to be talking about a, a very interesting paper that David has written on the economic and uh, trading and e investment consequences of Brexit for the United Kingdom. Uh, thank you for joining us, David, and thank you for the piece. Um, can I start off by asking you a general question? It, it's sometimes difficult in economics to isolate the particular effects of one factor because there are a number of factors which are at work and they're interacting with each other. People say that that's particularly true about Brexit because over the past five years, obviously, we've had the pandemic and we've had the, the, the war in Ukraine. Um, how, how easy do you think it is to come to reliable estimates, plausible estimates of the of the damage or, or consequences, if you prefer to put it that way, uh, of Brexit economically for the United Kingdom? Well, I think that's absolutely correct. That it is hard to disentangle the, uh, you know, the different facts. And, and obviously, we've lived through some extraordinary times. Uh, economically as well as geoeconomically geo as well as geopolitically. But I think it's quite clear, uh, in fact, it's incontrovertible now that, that Brexit has had a special effect. Uh, and, and it's had an effect which uh, clearly other countries have not suffered. Uh, and a lot of people have... Um, so basically, a lot of uh, people have addressed this issue I mean, they may have come to slightly different conclusions, but the overwhelming um, a, uh, a consensus is that Brexit has had a very deleterious effect on the British economy and will continue to do so. Some think it may worsen, actually, uh, from about the end of this year. Uh, and that you can tell this by, for example, within things like the IMF forecasts or things like that, which show Britain at the bottom of the uh, at the bottom of uh, the league. What are the mechanisms um, whereby Brexit is harmful economically? What are the sort of firms that are particularly badly affected by by the Brexit effect? Well, just before, if I may say so, before we go into that, I think I think the the what it's done uh, Brexit is what we know is that it it, it has damaged uh, people the 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 actual. Uh, uh, quantity, you know, the quantum, if you want to put it, of, of uh, effect, is something of the order of, you know, without Brexit, the British economy would be 4% higher than otherwise. And that's what, that is what the Office for Bu Budget Responsibility say. Uh, the Centre for Economic Reform, you know, uh, 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 like us, a think tank, they suggest 5.5%. Uh, Others have suggested figures it in a, in and around that way, uh, around that uh, around that estimate. Uh, but the impact I think has been on certainly. Well, first of all, it's been on trade. You know, uh, export volumes and import volumes, uh, particularly the EU, are down anything up to like fifteen percent year on year, uh, maybe more. Uh, there is a, I mean, foreign direct investment in some ways is held up, and possibly surprisingly quite well. But actually, investment as a whole is down. Uh, 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 you know, investment as, as a whole is down because of the deteriorating economic conditions. So you can see that it, in terms of overall effect, has been very very bad in terms of both the investment and trade, which was the topic of the paper. Yes. Um, is it going to get worse? Uh, you mentioned it might get worse. What 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 are the reasons to believe it might be worse? Will it affect um, shortages in the shops, perhaps? Well, well, indeed. I mean, you know, there has been. I mean, you, know, you only have to look. I mean, we're 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 talking at a bank holiday weekend, 
uh, you know, uh, the third one in May 2023. And I think if you were to go around to one of your local supermarkets in North London, like me in Edinburgh, uh, you would find that there are sort of several uh, shelves are very empty, actually. And I think that will continue. Yes, there will be uh, shortages of, of, of food and supply. I mean, for various reasons. One, you know, the uh, it's... Uh, that there are all these now non-tariff barriers to trade which have been erected, and and quite clearly we can see that trade uh, that these non-tariff barriers have had a very bad a bad impact and reduced what is called trade openness. I mean the trade openness, i.e. the 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 weight of of uh, trade within the UK's uh, GDP has gone down about 9%, 8 to 9% since 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 Brexit really took effect, i.e. since the Trade and Cooperation Agreement came into effect. So there's one clear way in which it's in, in which it's happened. And I think I think you asked earlier about individual, you know, uh, I mean it's quite uh, about individual sectors. I mean quite clearly agriculture is one. Uh, our own fishing industries had terrible problems. I mean I live in Scotland, as you know, and the, the biggest exporting industry here is uh, after, well, it's whiskey, of course. <laughs> but after that, non-whiskey, it's it's salmon. Salmon Scotland is it's the biggest food exporter in uh, the UK. And it's had a bit of a torrid time as well. So that's, there's, there's, there's other. There's uh, goods, uh, uh, goods as a whole uh, have, have not done it very well. Uh, the one sector which has... Uh, if if I may carry on, um, is uh, which has done okay. One surprisingly held up at one point is financial services, uh, but you know we're far from concluding there are there are you know Mairead McGuinness who is the uh, commissioner for financial services, Ecofin. She has indicated that there could well be a deal struck, you know, on equivalence passports and so on. Uh, which would ease the So far, there has not been a huge exodus of um, activity, city type activity, uh, financial services to uh, the EU, nor a big, huge amount of job losses. Uh, but they, but they are there, and there are fears that if they don't get a kind of a proper arrangement with the EU for one reason or another, uh, largely because. Uh, certain sections of the Conservative Party seem to think it's somehow in their interest or in the party's interest or mm -hmm. you know, not the country's interest to do so, to, to not to reach a deal, but to maintain this kind of confrontational stance. Um, you know, so there, there, are, there are fears that that will continue and that, you know, already you can see signs, Paris growing, uh, Amsterdam especially growing. And I, and I read the, I, wearing another of my hats, working with the Royal Society of Edinburgh um, and working with somebody, uh, uh, a, a kind of geographer actually, who's very keen on, very, knows a lot about financial services and certainly on a regional basis. There are now signs that, for example, some of the jobs in, in retail services, uh, in financial services, sorry, in financial services are going to countries like Poland. Very, very so, interesting. Yeah. Would, so, Whereas, you know, after 2004, when Poland, along with the other seven, you know, former communist countries joined the EU, you know, the jobs came from Poland, you know, the Poles came here in the hundreds of thousands, ten, you know, there was something like 700, 650 to 700,000 Poles living in Britain, in the UK. Many of them, not all of them, far from it, have all gone home. And the reason they came was because there was well-paid jobs here. Now it's going the other way. You know, Ordinary. the polls are going home, but yeah. also the jobs which our people would have had are actually now being created in Warsaw and elsewhere. Well, that's more about the domestic uh, impact of Brexit. Yeah. One of the things we were promised um, in the Brexit referendum was the ability to sign spectacular and advantageous new deals with third countries. Um, yes. That doesn't seem to have happened in general. What, what's your what's your analysis of that? Um, is it true that it's been a disappointment? Will it continue to be a disappointment? This aspect of Brexit. Well, I think the 
so far as one can tell, that most nearly, I mean, every every analysis which I've read, and I've read quite a lot, would suggest that it's been that, that the impact of these something like I think it's thirty or forty, is it? I can't remember precisely. Uh, trade deals that the that the UK government has struck, it's been minimal. I mean, the 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 one which they touted uh, most of all, the comprehensive trade agreement, you know, with the uh, uh, the specific in the Indo Pacific. Uh, that will add a minimal amount. Uh, it's even been suggested by the uh, Trade Department that um, it would be 0.08% per year. Uh, the great deal which they struck with Australia at 0.1%. And one of the reasons for this, of course, is because they're just rollovers. I mean, the one with the, the, the one with the, admittedly, the one in the, in the Pacific, no, that's not a rollover because the EU doesn't have it. But the overwhelming bulk of these uh, trade deals are, you know, they don't add much value. And then many people think, actually, the one we struck with Australia detracted value. For and example. that was perhaps because the United Kingdom government was so eager to strike a deal to be able to say, this is a deal we struck as a result of Brexit. Uh, yeah. Anything that's good is always presented as being the result of Bre Brexit. Uh, we've had uh, the extraordinary um, pointing to the um, slowing down of the German economy um, recently as being a, a proof that Brexit is working. Quite, quite, quite extraordinary. Um, <laughs> but m staying on the international aspect of this, mm. one of the hopes was that there would be a deal, a trade arrangement with the United States. That seems very, very unlikely. But, but even more importantly, the um, Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, which has got it, which is an odd name because it's uh, it's much more wide ranging than that. Um, seems to have created um, a sort of pole of attraction, if you like, for um, one part of the world's major economies, um, namely the United States, um, in pursuing the green agenda, the post industrial agenda, if you like. Uh, and the European Union is attempting to do something very similar with its green agenda and a, a suite of measures. Um, do, you, do you think there's a danger that the United Kingdom will find itself isolated between these two, uh, perhaps even becoming more protectionist um, giants of world trade, the United States and the European Union? Well, and we should add a third, China. Yes. China is, 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 has a very similar policies. Indeed, one of the reasons why Biden, Biden administration uh, uh, took on, you know, uh, undertook this uh, Inflation Reduction Act uh, and I hasten to add, it's had quite a bit of bipartisan, unusually, a lot of bipartisan support, is precisely because of the huge amount of a uh, made in China 2025, uh, which is now, uh, you know, what is it, 20, yeah, a big, big similar program. Uh, and the Biden one is worth, it, it's, it's worth a, a, an estimated two to three trillion dollars. And the uh, the EU one, which is being spearheaded by Thierry Breton, uh, and you're right, it does have protectionist elements in it. Uh, as a whole, the uh, the interventionist, if you like, wing of the Commission and the EU is in the ascendancy, and the free market, more liberal-minded people like uh, Bessager, the uh, you know the Competition Commissioner, uh, the Danish uh, woman, is in the. Uh, you know, they're, they're going down this sentence. They're on the back foot, uh, yeah. Yeah, they're on the back foot, yes. So uh, the Brits are very much, uh, there's a lot of rigging. You, you can see people wringing their hands now in the in the public prints, and, and indeed within the Conservative Party itself. Uh, you know, former industry ministers like, uh, secretaries like Greg Clark talking about this and about how we are simply falling behind we are not catching up with the uh, there are some areas in which they're trying to put some effort in like chips like uh, you know uh, things like that but if you just take for example the car industry i mean i used to write about the car industry on an almost daily basis as a journalist and britain at that point was generally viewed so we're talking over a decade ago generally viewed as being a kind of second in a uh, poll in Europe to the Germans, to the German industry. Now, we don't even get in the first division. It's quite astonishing. The decline of the British car value factory has been dramatic. I mean, Viz, 
you know, Mini, the great success story from Cowley Oxford, you know, uh, that BMW bought and invested in and so on and so forth. So where are they going to build their electric vehicle, their electric Mini? Not in Oxford. They're going to build it on the continent. And I think there are numerous examples like that. Tesla, for example, Elon Musk body, you know, offered the chance to come to Britain. No, it's going to Berlin. It's, and I think this is right across the piece. So I think we're in serious danger now of, of losing the way and the, uh, the history uh, of uh, battery production, for example. There are something like in the EU, there is this European Battery Alliance, and there are something like 40, well, there's, there's, a, there's about four or five dozen players in it, and there are something like 40 sites identified for investment on the European continent. In Britain, we have the sad debacle of a British vote. Uh, there is now a possibility, I gather, but it's not been signed, sealed, delivered as far as I know, of Jaguar Land Rover building a, a, a plant in, 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 the, in the West Midlands, you know, to, to, uh, to fulfill their own needs. But that's about it. So we simply lack any form of industrial strategy and in the current conjuncture, that is extremely damaging and very short-term thinking, which is going to come back and bite us. Yes, um, I, I think there's a general awareness that um, Brexit is not going well, um, but that hasn't yet translated into any major political push either to rejoin or even to rejoin the single market or the customs union. Uh, at what point do you think there will be such a, a widespread um, public concerned by the sort of issues you're talking about, that it translates itself into into bottom-up political pressure on political leaders? I think that's already... I, 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 I mean, I think some of that is already starting. We have saw the latest polls at the weekend about, you know, the 70% who think that certainly certainly where I'm speaking from in uh, north, of the, north of the border in Scotland, very much so we're even further down the tracks in that sense, you know. It's up in the, it's up in the mid-70s in terms of think a Brexit is bad for the country. And and not only that, actually uh, well over two thirds would like to rejoin. Um, so the pressure is there. I think it, I think people are, it seems to me there is a certain kind of inertia, you're right, or, or weariness rather. I think, you know, the pandemic, uh, the uh, the war, you know, the I mean, everything, it's really taken the stuffing out of people. I mean, I think that the, the kind of optimism that one might have seen, especially, Young people in particular, I'm, I'm really worried about, uh, you know, because I think they, they see uh, not a huge amount of hope for the future. I mean, I heard a young woman the other day uh, in a, what, well, admittedly, just in a village butchers, actually, saying, there's nothing for my generation. We've had it. You know, we are not going anywhere. And we were talking at that time about Europe. And I said, well, of course, we should never, she said, too, right. We should never have left the EU. It's a disaster. I would have a much better time if we were still in the EU. So there we are. So I think that, so that's one of the, the, it's hard to tell, isn't it, always, these things. When will the world turn? And it seems to me that my view is that if and when, and, and all the indications are that it's going to happen, in, at the end of next, towards the end of next year, or, or also of next year, we have a general election. Labour does well. Labour probably, possibly forms, if not a majority government, certainly by far the biggest party, uh, and you know heads a heads a government. And my view, and, and part of the purpose of this paper that that, that we that we did, uh, yeah, is that all the plans that Labour has, or indeed, you know, others, the Lib Dems, and, and, or indeed the SNP, uh, whoever, have for reviving the economy, for, you know, for, in, for, for finally getting over this long-standing, almost endemic problem of low productivity, low wages, all of that, you know, uh, will, will only come about if we, at the very least, rejoin the single market of customs union, and preferably rejoin the EU. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I recommend uh, very much the paper which contains this information and um, in greater detail. 
Um, but we've had a very interesting and stimulating discussion. Thank you very much, David. I, I hope our, our viewers will look at the website of the Federal Trust and see there are a number of similar videos on it, which I, I hope they'll find interesting and informative. Thank you very much. Thank you very much too, Brendan.